ain't James. Space on the front page. Hi, well, welcome back, everyone. Again, I am your host, Deborah Coco. I have a guest, Chicago-born artist, um, St. James is joining me, and we're going to talk about his music, his his new release, Gentle. I love it. It's, it's a beautiful song. And we're going to talk about what's coming up for Mr. St. James and what we can look forward to. So join me in welcoming St. James to the show. Hey, what's up, Deborah Coco? <laughs> Yeah. Hi, hi. Thank you for joining me. Thanks, and be, before we start off this interview, I definitely have to give Vaughn James a, a nice shout out for connecting me with you. Um, yeah. He sent me the information. He was like, I really want you to sit to talk with, with you know, artists that I'm working with and check out his music. He's doing big things. And I was like, yeah, send that information over. And boy, was I surprised. Like, I was so surprised because I listen to so many artists and I hear so many different types of music, but to hear some good R and B, like I, <laughs> I'm such an old school. Like I love like the original R and B music, and I definitely felt so nostalgic listening to that song. That was one of my favorite songs, yeah. and it, I was just in here like swaying and dancing. Loved it, and you have such a great voice. Thank you, thank you so much. I I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm just. Yeah. You know, <laughs> man, I've been, I've been hiding for a while. I've been trying to break through, but you know how it is. You just got to keep pushing. No, the industry is definitely very hard. And I think at some point it became even harder for R&B artists, right? Yeah, sure. Especially with the whole merge of R&B and hip hop. It seems like they were kind of trying to throw out real good R&B, yeah. right? They was trying to remove it from all the airwaves. So, oh, man. you know. Urban music, yeah. Think, but like anything else in America, it's it's we got to be honest about it. It is no, why would why would we be surprised that corporate America, in terms of the the the, the uh, disparity, the racism, the, uh, the 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 inequality, why would it not exist in the music industry? It's a multi billion dollar industry, so I'm not surprised. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And you know, a lot of things when they feel like they can capitalize off of urban music or whatever or that genre mm -hmm. that they really don't know too much about they're going to find a way you know to get in there and try to control that yeah. but you know that's i try to do segments and it, it, that's a good point to talk about yeah. but we have to talk about like you <laughs> and singing and coming from chicago and how did this whole music lane open up for mr st james i love that's a great name how did that open up for you uh you know i think just just perseverance, uh, consistency. I had days where I, I tried, I, I wanted to throw in the towel, and I have literally thrown in the towel. I did one, I did, I threw in the towel for seven years, and wow. I'm, 50, I'm 53 now. A lot of people get real, real weird when I tell my age. I don't care. Charlie Wilson's over 60, doing, doing what he's doing. Smokey Robinson's still making records. I don't want to hear right. it. Right, right, right. 53, I'm still a young whippersnapper to, to them cats. So to me, right. you know, I'm not going to sit here and, and say I'm washed up. Or I'm too old to do what I love and this music. And as you can see, my vocals, God has blessed me with the ability to sing like a yes. young. Yes. So, but more importantly, I produce and I write and I have a vision for what I, what, how I want R&B to go because there's no one representing r and B. I mean, there's people out there saying they're this, they're the king of R&B. That's fine if that's your thing, but rhythm and blues doesn't belong to anybody. It no, it doesn't. So right, me, right. I'm just, a, I'm just a, a messenger and an advocate to it. Not, not the, uh, the, 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 the king on the throne of it. Never will ever try to be that. If somebody else says it about me, that'll be you saying it, but it won't be me. I'm yes. focused on just making good music and trying to reach the people that need it. So, uh, you know, we, we gotta, we just gotta get back to allowing the music that we grew up on that we love to satisfy our appetites and palates, and we control the narrative of it because. We got the purchasing power. We have the money, right. the 401ks, the jobs, the businesses, the career. Right. You know what I'm saying we have to get back to loving R&B again and not being. People are actually walking around afraid to admit that they like R&B in 2021. That is embarrassing to me. I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> Very much so. But you know, everybody's become so disconnected to want right. to feel good. Right. You can't want to throw your hands up and party all the time. <laughs> you know, you can't listen to Pop Smoke and all these other artists all the time. All the we, time. What do you do when you lay back with your lady or you oh, lay like back with your significant fact. other and you sipping on some wine? Like, what do you do? Who do you listen to? Yeah. Who do you turn to? <laughs> they, 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 listen, 
<laughs> Obviously, they they listen to that stuff and still doing what they do. <laughs> right, right. Maybe it don't mean I have a factor for some people, but I'm saying for the mature, you know, that's how we know how to relax. That's how I, when I go to relax, I don't want to have to turn on the radio because I know I'm going to be highly disappointed. Exactly. So I'm going to have to wait eight songs later right. until I can hear one song that I really want to listen to. That's so, right. I mean, being from Chicago and you have a lot of great artists that came from Chicago. Like, did you have an opportunity growing up to really perform a lot and express your gift in a lot of different venues? And did you have a lot of opportunities to you know, showcase your I, skills? You know, I, I was a kid because you know I've been. I was born in the '60s, obviously, late '60s, so '68 to be exact. And I recall that Jackson Five were just kind of like coming. Michael Jackson still doing it. <laughs> so you know, you know, he was doing—he was that Michael. You know what I'm saying? So uh, my mama just felt like, okay, let me throw you—you you out in the middle of the. Uh, of the cause we live in a project, so you know the project you have the big in Chicago the high rises. You have the big uh, courtyard area. People, we have a—it uh, was—it was kind of like concrete jungle, so to speak. But she would put okay. me back dab in the middle, put a put a tip bucket out there, and I'll be doing all the moves and singing. I'll be getting no was, way. Dude, it was crazy. We would literally eat off of me, me singing for our supper. That's how you was paying the rent. Look at yeah. that now. <laughs> yeah, mama, mama had a plan. Mama had a plan. That's right, Mama. Right. Sure hey, oh, rest in peace, my mama. By the way. Yeah, she, oh yes. Yeah, sorry. Thing, but yeah, she she had me out there singing, and that's how it started for me. And I got bit by the bug. Plus, my grandmother was a singer and a gospel singer, and so Monday through Friday. She be she be tearing it up with older right. the damn cook the temptations the Dells everybody shy light then come Sunday you better have your butt ready for Sunday school right right you better go <laughs> but wasn't that the blessed that like Sunday school like a lot of people talk about Sunday school that's one of the best places to get some good singing lessons that's you know right. and that's how you learn to sing from your heart you know oh, and right. it's soul oh, if you ain't careful you get a spanking too on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> you sure will. You sure will. But I, I want to touch upon the fact of what you said, like you actually ended up even with the love and the joy and the passion and everything for music, like you actually had to step away for like seven years, right? Because like we said, there was a big shift in music at some point. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it was a little, I felt that it was a little harder for R&B singers because for one, when you went to perform, a lot of R&B singers needed a band. Right. Or there were groups of five, mm -hmm. and people weren't didn't want to pay the kind of money that they you know that you need to really pay for a group to travel right. expenses and things like that. So there was other factors, not just the radio that kind of hurt R and B, right. but it might have just been keeping up with the standards of like when you first used to perform. I know Carl Thomas would go out and get like 15, 20 grand a show, right. you know, then it, then it dropped the five and it's like, okay, well we'll pay for your hotel room, but we're not paying for anybody else, you know? So yeah. the industry itself just started changing. Yeah. Yeah. And then the DJs, you know, it was like, you could come, but you can't bring your band. We'll just play it on a CD or something. Yeah, it ain't the same, man. <laughs> it's not. It's it not. It diminished the value of, of the R&B on the road, R&B artists on the road because the road is where you make your money. The road is where you build your fan base and the road is where you grow up. So if, right. you, if you're limited to do that because they're trying to penny pinch and cut costs and see the the reality is people want it. They want microwave music. They don't right. really know that you put no time and effort in and really put work into it. So they, so, and then it's all about analytics now. They don't care how dope you are, how great your music no, is. No, they don't. They numbers. They, you can be the, your stuff can be garbage and they, as long as them numbers are good, they don't care. And that's, that's, and that's just ridiculous. But well, we see that now, right? That That's exactly what we're looking at now. We're looking at artists that have these high numbers and they're the ones that's getting the deals. But when you listen to the music, it's like, what are they even talking about? Right. I don't even have an idea what I'm dancing to. You know, <laughs> and I can't, I can't even understand what they're saying. Right. So yeah, it, it, it's just, you know, they just made a whole mess of our music. I mean, but I, I, I could watch it two, three more times. It, it's so much passion. <laughs> it's it's just, and, and Sinead, she can sing. She bad, she, ain't she? She has a beauty. She hit a little note in there. I was like, ooh. Yeah. Great duo. Great combination. Great rendition. Like, beautiful. It, it, it's, I'm about to do this. Once we finish, it's going on repeat. I'm playing that quite a few more times. You haven't heard before. the 
P. I got we did baby come to me. We may have you. Oh my God. Oh my God. I, I please send it to me. Please. Okay. Look, this, email address. I got you. This song, okay, it peaked number seven on Global Top 200. It hit number one on the Indie Soul Charts. It hit number one on the 100 Hip Hop and R&B Miami. It hit number 16 on the Global Hip Hop R&B Charts Top 50. Amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> Okay. And, 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 and please don't stop singing. Like you have a, a great voice. Like I, I haven't seen a video so passionate without people actually being passionate. Like right. <laughs> I, I'm like, yo, it, it was just, it's, it's beautiful. I don't even know what else to say about it. Oh, but yeah, I, I'm so happy that you did that song. I'm so happy that you're doing music and you got back into your passion. We didn't get into your break, but we don't need to. You are here today and you are doing what you love. To do.